I'm going to explore the many aspects surrounding the question of can octopuses be farmed in this episode of How to Protect the Ocean. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I am your host, Andrew Luna, and this is the podcast where you find out what's happening with the ocean, how you can speak up for the ocean, and what you can do to live for a better ocean. And today we're going to be talking about aquaculture. Specifically, can we can we farm octopus, right? Is that really a thing that we can do? You know, we've seen octopus are an amazing animal. You know, you look at an octopus, it can change colors, it can hunt, it can actually hunt with fish and even keep them at bay when they're when they're predating on prey. It's actually quite interesting, these animals. We also know that they've been documented to feel pain and pleasure. So when somebody comes up and a company comes up and it says, hey, we want to farm octopus. We think it's going to, one, reduce the pressures on wild populations to getting caught, and two, it could help feed the people who want to eat it. A lot of the Mediterranean countries and a lot of the uh, Asian countries that like to feed, uh, they, like to, they like to eat octopus from a cultural standpoint. So the company that's proposing this to the EU uh, that wants to farm octopus is called Nueva I think it's called Nueva Pescanova, which is a Spanish company. And essentially, they want to raise octopus vulgaris, which is the common Atlantic octopus. It'll be housed in a thousand, a thousand communal tanks in a two-story building in the port of Las Palmas in Gran Canaria, which is the Canary Islands. So several of the concerns that are happening with this that are concerning researchers uh, is that several octopuses will be in the same tank. Now, they can be very territorial. Wild octopus can be very territorial. Uh, they can eat each other. They can kill each other. And so there's obviously some concern there with putting more than one octopus in a tank. The light on the tank will be on uh, quite a bit, even if not at all times. So octopus usually hide and hunt in the dark. Uh, very little light is around. And so having a light might impact the way these octopus hand, handle their sort of life cycle normally. Wastewater concerns uh, for phosphate and nitrogen levels that come out of the facility with a thousand communal tanks uh, is definitely a concern. You know, when we're talking about wastewater that go out at the end of a pipe that go into a lake or an ocean, in this case it will be an ocean, uh, they're looking at, well, how is this going to get, you know, one, how is this going to get, um, how is the intake going to come into the to the facility and how is it going to go out? What are the numbers? Are gonna, what are the numbers of those phosphate levels, of those nitrogen levels, of ammonia levels? What will those numbers be when it comes out at the end of the pipe to go back into the ocean after going through all those tanks? Octopus are known to uh, produce waste that is high in phosphates and nitrogen. And so what are those numbers going to be? Are they going to be regulated or are they just going to be left to best practices, which usually isn't that good of a, of a detail? So EU do, does have regulations, so it'll be interesting to see what those regulations will be. Then there's the case that there are no animal welfare legislation for octopus in the EU. That's really concerning to a lot of uh, scientists and researchers and conservationists and advocates around the world. Uh, you know, when you have, when you talk about octopus, I know in Canada, when you're looking at experiment, like to doing experiments or behavioral experiments with octopus, there are specific guidelines, like very, very strict and specific guidelines that you have to follow to take care of an octopus in a tank. When you see a giant Pacific octopus in a North American aquarium, again, there are very strict rules and regulations that, that the aquarium has to abide by to ensure that the octopus is treated properly. So have, not having these welfare regulations in place in the EU uh, is very concerning because we won't know really what's going on within this facility. It's in the Canary Islands. It's remote. Um, you know, not a lot of people will get access to it. So what's really going what's really going to go on there without these regulations? Now, the company states that uh, the farming practices of octopus would actually decrease pressure on wild populations, which are currently, they're usually caught in using pots, lines, or traps, and they're eaten all over the world, uh, including, like I said, the Mediterranean and Asia. Decreasing the populations would, or decreasing the fishing pop, uh, pressure on the populations, wild populations, with there are about 350,000 individuals that are, that are caught every year. That would be great to decrease it, um, but the, what, 
people are worried about, economists are worried about, like fisheries economists are worried about, is that having more farmed octopus would actually decrease the price of octopus, maybe opening up, you know, new markets within within sort of the octopus market and the farming market. So they're worried that more people will eat it if the price comes down, which usually happens with farmed fish. So now we're looking at, you know, we, we've seen the, we hear the concerns. I've just told you the concerns. It's something that is, uh, you know, something that we have to be careful of. We have to monitor. Um, a lot of people just don't want this to go through, especially with the way they plan on, you know, raising the animals as well as killing the animals. When you're preparing octopus or any farmed animal to be, uh, to be farmed, you've got to produce the food. So that means you've got to kill the animal. What they want to do, the, the company wants to do is they're going to be killing uh, the animals by submerging them in containers that are kept at negative three degrees Celsius. Now that is pretty cold. Um, and it, the, desi the design is it'll freeze the animals. It's, they're saying that it won't cause pain. Other researchers are disagreeing with that, saying that it'll be like a slow death for the octopus um, and something that will be torturous. They would rather have the animals stunned before that. And there are regulations uh, for uh, submerging animals in, you know, in very cold water before you kill them. So that, that's something that is a, a, a big concern. So they're hoping that, um, you know, this will be changed. Um, but at this point, nothing's going to be changed. They're just going to be submerged in negative three degree water, freezing them to death. Eventually they will die. But they'll, like I said, they, they feel pain. They feel pleasure. They're going to feel this. It's going to be like a nightmare for them, according to some researchers, and it's something that we have to be concerned of. The initial brood of octopus that's going to be put into place is going to be 100. There's going to be 70 males. 30 females uh, would be taken from a research facility within Pescanova uh, Biomarine Center in Galatia, northern Spain, where the company resides, uh, and then it'll be transported into uh, the, to the Canary Islands. What they're hoping is that the domestication of the species will allow the uh, the company to put them to put animals in at the like at the same time. You know, so there'll be multiple animals in. It'll be a communal tank in those thousand tanks. So there'll be like maybe four or five, maybe six individuals at a time. Uh, that could work if they're domesticated, but it'll be really interesting to see if that if they can be domesticated, if that will actually work, and if they won't hurt each other, kill each other, eat each other. It's something that they're really worried about. Now, feeding it, uh, they will be feeding them. They can't be really feel like dried products, uh, but they will be feeding them and discards of uh, and byproducts of already caught fish. So anything that maybe bycatch or you know dead already dead fish or something like that that's fresh, they'll be providing that as food. Farming octopus can happen. It can happen sustainably because they'll be raising the octopus in tanks. They're not going to be grabbing them from from the the they're not going to be grabbing them from the wild. The company will be raising it themselves within their facility. Now, one of the major concerns and reasons why we haven't seen octopus farming before was because raising the octopus in a facility is very difficult, just like a lot of marine animals, like marine fish for the ornamental industry. There are numerous life stages, especially early on, that need specific foods at specific times. They need to be live, and they need to have different tanks that will provide the lifestyle that that the life cycle stage needs to be able to survive so larval stages will uh, eat different animals than the adult stages and so having different tanks having a different process coming up with that process can take a long time it's very experimental a lot of trial and error they've done it for ornamental a lot of ornamental fish that have been able to be raised in a tank uh, and bred in within like a sort of tank facility. And so in 2019, they came, this company came out with a breakthrough saying, hey, we've actually been able to do that. So now that they're confident in doing that, the proposal has gone in and we're they're hoping that they'll be able to you know license it and, and get approval by the EU to be able to go through. Now, the, the interesting part of all this is what will the regulations be? Will it, will it fall under regular aquaculture sort of regulations that the EU has? 
has, if they have some, I assume they do. Uh, how will it really be managed? It's in, it's not an open pen facility, which is great. It's more of a closed system facility. You know, you can put regulations at the end of the pipe for the wastewater that comes out so to control nitrogen, phosphate, ammonia, and so forth. Uh, so that's always a good that's always a good sign. You want to have uh, these types of regulations in place. Obviously, animal welfare regulations should be in place or should be uh, created, should be written up just for this facility. Obviously, we didn't really need many of those uh, welfare documents to be put in for octopus because they probably don't have a lot of octopus in confinement unless it's a, a an institute a research institute or an aquarium or something like that so we don't really have a lot of those uh in place but i i would assume that this would be in place if this facility goes through so we know we can answer the question of can octopus be farmed absolutely it can be farmed can it be done sustainably sure if you're raising the octopus in uh in a, a tank and you're going from breeding all the way to adulthood it could probably be done sustainably ethically should we be raising octopus in farmed uh, facilities and killing them for food? That's the question that really comes to play. A lot of advocates, a lot of researchers say we shouldn't just because of the ability for these animals to feel pain and pleasure. Uh, so a lot of people are against it. A lot of people find that octopus are like an iconic species and so we should treat them as such uh you know we've seen uh, other iconic species be used for meat whales dolphins you know a lot of different cetaceans are being used for meat uh we've seen sea turtles in certain caribbean islands and other islands being used for for meat and the eggs being being eaten so there is obviously a market for that normally in very small areas and not at a, a huge commercial level, although we have seen it. And so the question is really is, from an ethical standpoint, should we be eating and farming and eating octopus? So that's the question that I'd leave you. If you have uh, an answer or if you have an opinion, please let me know in the comments below if you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can DM me on Instagram at how to protect the ocean. Or if you want to get a hold of me, uh, you another way you can go or if you want to email me, you can email me by going to speakupforblue.com, clicking on the contact us page, filling out the form that goes straight to my email. I would love to hear your opinion on should we farm and eat octopus? Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. Don't forget to click like, ring that bell for notifications for future episodes, and hit the subscribe button. And thank you so much for listening to How to Protect the Ocean. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day and happy conservation.